Okay, so I want to talk a little bit more about this idea of using technology in an exploratory mode. I was really excited to see this particular um, submission that one of you um, uploaded. And by the way, I'm so glad so many of you figured out how to use the code to upload um, your interactive dynamic um, graphs. If you didn't know, if you couldn't figure out how to do it, please email me and I will um, try to make a video to show you. So this person actually did a couple really cool things. One thing that she did was actually graphed x squared, see, in uh, blue, and then the red is the um, ax squared plus c. And what I love here is um, they really went through an exploratory kind of what-if scenario. When both A and C are 1, the parabola is concave, leaving A at 1. When I move C, it corresponds to the number the parabola meets. For example, C is 5, the parabola meets at 0, 5, negative 5. And I think what she means, the parabola meets, I think what she means is the vertex, right? The, ver the vertex is there, or the parabola meets the y-axis, maybe. Um, oops, but the idea here is um, you are thinking of ways to use... The the calculator beyond just what I asked you to do, which is putting in another graph or putting in a point or figuring out how can I actually explain to myself what I'm seeing. And um, so there's a couple different um, explanations. Some of you just did an amazing job of answering that question of why. So for example, um, Cecilia wrote, um, a is being multiplied times x, and since x is squared, the value of y keeps getting larger as x increases, and y increases, and it makes it narrower. If I were to use smaller units like 1, and 1 squared is 1, therefore the graph would not be as narrow as if it were 4. So again, it's this idea of exploration with numbers. In this case, if the function is c equals 3, the entire graph will be added 3, um, and the y-intercept will be at 3. There's a couple things about this I really liked. One of them is the fact that she notices she's exploring. She's saying if I'm putting in different values for what happens. She's also saying, noticing this, when I put C equal 3, the entire graph moves up. Many of you said when I put, when I change the value of C, the vertex moves up. But then you'd have a vertex moving up, but every other point not moving up, it would be kind of like gum on a shoe. So um, I actually... Um, brought that to people's attention. I was really careful when I was grading to um, make sure that you understand that um, it's not just the vertex moving. When you add or, you know, when you even if C is negative and you're subtracting, you're subtracting that value of C from every point on the graph, not just the vertex. Here's another one that Bryce wrote, a generalized explanation, right? So the question is, it seems to get skinnier and fatter um, but what's really happening? The y values of the function for every x are being multiplied by the factor of whatever a is. So it looks like it's skinnier or fatter um, for the y value is increasing faster than the same x value. So this is really, really important. I really like the way he said that. What we're saying here is the if, if you say wider, then it seems as though it's increasing in a horizontal direction. But what's happening is the x values are staying the same, the y values are increasing or decreasing. For the c value, the graph shifts up or down because no matter what the x value is, uh, values at c is 0, uh, the constant will be added to all the values. Again, he made the same comment that Cecilia did that I want to, again, bring to everybody's attention, that C changes the values of every um, Y value. When C is zero, the vertex will also be on zero. Same for one and every other value. So those are some really good uh, explorations that I was really um, happy to see. Here's a couple of other notes on the activity assignment. Several of you said... Um, a refers to the slope of the parabola. So, for example, one person says the plot re um, reacts as it does because the value of A increases, the slope becomes steeper. As the value of A decreases, the slope also becomes steep. However, it becomes steep towards the negative direction. Now, I'm not sure what exactly you mean by that because a parabola doesn't really have a, a single slope. Um, in addition, C is the y-intercept of the function, therefore if C equals 1, the y-intercept is also equal to 1. But I shouldn't have put that part in there. What I'm trying to get at is referring to A as a slope. If you have a parabola, then the slope 
would be different at each point x, right? That's the definition of the derivative is the slope at a given point x. It's the slope of the tangent line at that point x. So it, I'm not sure what you mean by a being the slope of the parabola. Um, and, you know, as for any point x, sometimes the slope is going to be negative and sometimes the slope is going to be positive. So what I'm doing when I'm asking you to make these um, exploratory comments and explanations is to practice thinking about the uh, language that you use and the actual uh, way that you phrase things. Here's another one. A is directly responsible for the slope, which determines how narrow or fat the parabola can be, and the sign changes um, relate directly to which direction it opens. But again, um, you know, A, if A is positive, yes, it's concave up, but sometimes the slope is negative and sometimes the slope is positive. So that's why I want you to think a little bit um, more specifically about what you mean by slope and why the sign changes relate to the direction. Uh, another thing here is, as I said earlier, several of you said that when you change C, um, the origin moves up and down. One person wrote, this occurs because C is responsible for moving the origin up or down the Y axis. So why is that the case? And it's not just C, it's not just the vertex moving up and down, it's every point on the parabola. Because C is not attached to a variable X, I think what you mean there is it's an additive component rather than a multiplicative component. It's used to find the y-intercept of the graph. This is shown by the slider as the only thing that changes when c is changed is where the origin crosses the y-intercept. So again, that's not the case. It's not the only thing that changes. Every y-value changes additively when uh, c is changed. So what vocab can we focus on? So again, when you say the slope of the parabola, what you want to think about is not the slope as one value, but the slope at every point x, the slope of the tangent line at every point x. Some of you talked about the rate of change of parabola. To me, those seem like similar things, but again, the rate of change changes depending on where you are on the parabola. Um, one of you uh, wrote that the um, c, the changes in c cause a vertical shift. That's fantastic. Uh, that's exactly what we are um, visualizing, where every y has a vertical shift, either in the positive or the negative direction. And when you change a, it's a vertical dilation. So the idea is to push a bit more to notice that the both a and c values affect only the y values, but all of the y values. For any given x, the a value has a multiplicative effect. Okay, that is what we call this vertical dilation. We call it a dilation on the y value of x squared, while the c value has an additive effect causing the vertical shift. Now, I don't want you to hear this and say, oh, she was shopping for those words, or that's what I was supposed to say. That's not the case at all. What I'm showing you is that we can build on students' thinking to say, okay, start here, what were you thinking? How can we push you a little bit more in this direction? I certainly wasn't saying it's wrong if you didn't use these words. I'm saying that it makes a lot of sense and this is a good way for technology to be a tool to support students' development of um, more language. All right, so this is the end of video one. And now I'm gonna um, ask you to watch video two and then um, we're going to come back and talk about the design features in video three.